DH 541B knew his allotted task. It was to take a receptacle from the store, place an object within, then pass it on to KX750T, who worked the dispatch shift. KX750T would label and check the item before sending it out into the world way beyond the warehouse. After that stage, it was no longer their concern. The objects came in a variety of colours, mostly red, purple or blue. The occasional intrusion of yellow or green items didn't really cause any disruption to the regular routine. DH 541B always took a receptacle from the top of the pile. Attempting to extract a container from the middle of a stack, or even worse, the bottom, would cause a collapse and a temporary halt to the vital labour of the warehouse. There had been two or three such anarchic events during the early years, but now everything ran like clockwork. Management insisted that it be so. ZF 229A was the operative responsible for ensuring that the stack remained well supplied. DH 541B had spoken to ZF 229A only when it was deemed necessary. Management hadn't visited the warehouse in well over a year. Even so, the work rates hadn't slackened at all. Every operative had their role and fulfilled it without question. Except RF 911A. Nobody exactly knew what RF 911A's function was in the whole procedure. RF 911A had taken it upon herself to rebel. DH 541B worried that he and all the other operatives would become the undeniable casualties of the purported revolution. But he couldn't help being attracted by RF 911A's vibrant personality and compelling rhetoric. RF 911A had grasped the opportunity of management's continued absence and had broken all the protocol by calling everyone to a combined refreshment break rather than the discreet and discreet time stoppages set down in the Code of Conduct. RF 911A had dyed her hair pink and it contrasted sharply with her dark skin and bottom of a well eyes. I've got the proof of the pointlessness of everything, she stated. Do you want to see? DH 541B found himself nodding, even as his organic heart lurched like a falling elevator. OK, RF 911A, he muttered. It's Alicia, she answered. And your birth name was, is, Harry. Let's cut the ties to our machine mind oppressors. KX750T, ZF229A and a few other personnel had joined them by now. DH541B was, in human terms, a little older than his colleagues and found himself dragging up words and phrases like strike and downing tools and ceased production from his unconscious mind. Look, RF911A, Alicia demonstrated. Here's a blue vessel from the shelves and here's a magnifying glass. Look at the object and then look at my thumb and forefinger. KH 541B frowned. A magnifying glass? Where had she acquired such contraband? So it's got your fingerprints on it. That's because you picked it up. But I only touched it with my left hand today, which is plastex gloved. Murmurs and a couple of, I don't get it. This item has been across the world and has come back to me. Nothing has happened to it. Don't you see? KX 750T shook his head, turned and walked back to his station. RF 911A, Alicia, grabbed KH 541B's arm and the strong human contact was electrifying. This real life touching was stronger than his video sims he enjoyed in his dorm unit isolation at the end of his shift. It's all pointless, she whispered. The machine mind has brought us to this. We are working for no purpose. ZF 229A and the others had also drifted off, leaving just these two erstwhile workers alone in this quiet corner of the huge warehouse. So much for the great human revolutionary fight back, DH 541B. 
Harry muttered. What do you propose we do? I'd say it was obvious. We walk out to our freedom. Do you know the way? I'm assuming it's somewhere other than the usual shift entry point. Her eyes glowed and she reached across to him again. I've been doing some research. Hacking, they used to call it. He let her lead him to a part of the building he'd never visited before. A few operatives looked up as the couple went past, but nobody else left their posts. Harry remembered another old phrase about all blazes beginning with just one tiny spark, or two. At the fire exit, obvious now he thought about it, they stopped to take one last look at their place of employment. A wave of uncertainty went through him like a glitch in a video simulation. Listen, RF, uh, Alicia, he stated, you know that we voted for things to be this way, to give us jobs, you know, an apparent purpose. The majority was over 90%, if I remember. That was then, Harry. She pushed at the door release handle. It's time for a new referendum, she added. Thank you.